Thank you. Okay, another mystery box. My job is to tell you just how many colors in a gem you see. I'd be so grateful if you'd teach our loyal viewers just how to use me. Hmm. Well, I'm guessing this could be another piece of gem testing equipment. So let's have a look. Excellent. So this is a London dichroscope. You just open it up here and its construction is very simple. It's made up of two polarizing filters, pieces of polarizing filter, one here, one there. And these are both set at 90 degrees to each other. And we use this to test for a gem's pleochroism. Now, pleochroism um, means many colors. So pleo is many, chroism, colors. So let's take a look at how that works. Okay, so um, we've got our London dichroscope. Now, one of the most important things we need are testing gemstones, and I have three here. We also need a light source. Voila, I have a white light source here. Um, the most important thing, your light source that you need for using your London dichroscope must be what we call diffused. It's gotta be softened down. Just to diffuse that light down is, is will give you better results. Now, this isn't a diagnostic instrument. It's not like our refractometer, for example. This is an indicator um, tool, but it, it can work really well um, with, with various different gemstones. So the gems that we test using a dichroscope, they must be to have some degree of transparency to them. So we've got to be able to get light through them. They have to be doubly refracting. And that means the light goes in, bends, splits. This test will not work or be applicable for singly refracting gems. That seems like your spinel, your fluorite, your garnet, for example. And also our gem has to have color. Um, this test will not work on colorless gemstones. You have to have color. When light passes into a colored, doubly refracting gemstone, there is the potential to see different colors in different directions emanating from the gemstone. Now, our eyes are not sensitive enough. We're not able to see those two or three different colors as it exits the gem. So this is why we need an instrument. What this London dichroscope allows us to do is to see the various different colors or shades or intensities of color that are emanating from that gem. So I have some gems here to test. This is a tourmaline. It's a tricolor tourmaline. So we've Actually, it looks like a four color tourmaline. So I think we've got green, blue and pink in there, if, if I'm seeing right. And what I would do is just take the um, dichroscope and gently draw it across the gem. And as I do so, what I'm seeing is the tourmaline will turn from lighter colors to slightly darker colors. So this gem is dichroic. If I take another gem, this time we've got a tanzanite crystal and do the same. Gently wave the dichroscope over the crystal. I'm seeing two colors. I'm seeing a yellowish green and a, and a, and a bluish purple. But like any element of gem testing, it's important that we turn the stone in, in all different directions. So I'm just going to pick him up turn him slightly and bam, I'm now seeing not only a blue coloration, but also like a, a purplish coloration too. So within that crystal on rotation, I'm seeing three individual colors. So this gem is trichroic. It's showing three individual colors. There are other types of, dichro of um, dichroscope, such as the calcite dichroscope that I have here. It does exactly the same job. It allows us to see the different colors emanating from our doubly refracting colored gemstones, but its construction is slightly different. So inside this tube, you have a piece of optical grade calcite. Um, it'll either have 
two prisms at either end, or it will have the ends of the calcite cut in a very particular direction, just, just so everything lines up as light passes um, through, the, through the lens and out through the eyepiece. So all we would do is, is have a, a light source, and then you would hold the, get the right end, up to the eye. I'm seeing two individual squares, and as I rotate the crystal, I'm seeing two different colours within those squares. So it does the same, the same job as our London Dichroscope, it's just it's a bit more hands-on. I hope you've enjoyed um, this YouTube presentation and unboxing. As always, these tests should always be used in conjunction with other um, tests such as observation, refractometer, so on and so forth, just to make sure you get an overall picture of what you're testing. So if you're starting out in gem testing, then um, you don't have to go for really big units and more expensive units. You can go for more um, cost-effective options. Have a search around and, and see what's cost-effective for, for you in regards to building up a good gem testing equipment. But I would say the most essential of all, if you're just starting out from absolute scratch, um, a loop, 10 times loop, stone cloth, stone cloth and stone tongs and a good light source is absolutely essential. That's your basic foundations. And then build up your range of testing equipment from there.